I'm Daisy Hunter. I'm an autistic and disabled artist and inclusive practitioner. As an artist, my work focuses around the themes of disability, activism and escapism. I kind of started on this new journey working with um, Art Space, Live Space to make their events more inclusive and accessible. In 2020, with the pandemic happening, um, myself and my husband went into shielding. I started creating at home and then that kind of led to lots of different opportunities. The pandemic opened up a lot of things for disabled people because there was options to work from home and courses and things were offered online. And I think a lot of the disabled community was hoping that because organisations and educational settings had started to um, become more hybrid and go more online, that that would continue because they've shown that it was possible. But coming out of the pandemic, um, it stopped being as common. I came to the realisation that it's not something that everyone was discussing. It was just within these disabled communities. I've started working in consultancy and working with arts organisations to make their events and their spaces more accessible and more inclusive. Also from that I secured Arts Council funding. I'm going to do my own exhibition and from that make a blueprint to show a working example of how you can make the arts and the creative sector more accessible. I've also started my own um, creative community for neurodiverse, disabled and chronically ill people. Um, it's called Bone Idol with the uh, idea that everyone can be creative and that everyone has their own story to tell. Growing up, I never had these opportunities to create and be creative. I saw art as being one thing and it was this very inaccessible thing for me. It wasn't this like free, um, non-judgmental kind of activity. So I want to be the person that shows everyone that, you know, they can do it. And you can see that there's so many people out there just creating. And, and I think that was really inspirational for me. And I think you can kind of get in your own head about things and think, oh, I need to be creating a specific thing or I need to be reaching a certain number of likes or views or a certain size audience. But I think it's just taking away that judgment of yourself. I think there's a lot of importance around building communities and reaching out to people. I'm quite an introvert. I found it just, it really built my confidence and having people that just cheering you on and supporting you made such a difference. I think the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome was um, imposter syndrome. That feeling of not, be, not belonging, not being worthy of the spaces that you're entering. I feel like no matter how successful you are, you are gonna get imposter syndrome. And you're never gonna achieve something unless you take the first step. My first steps with this were um, volunteering, just applying for opportunity. I just took the leap and decided this is what I want to do. So I'm gonna put myself in these spaces. I think sometimes you think, oh, I'm just one person but it just takes one person to start a discussion about something to make positive change. Starting this, I kind of built my community. I did at the start, I felt very much like I am that one disabled person in the room. But then the more and more I've done, the, the more people I've met, the more disabled people I've met who are willing to build something together. I worked on the Who's Future campaign, which is um, created by Rising Arts Agency. And I created pieces of artwork um, to represent people who were housebound and unable to 
engage with the creative sector. Now I have a really supportive community of other disabled and neurodiv neurodivergent people around me. Like there's power in me as the individual, but there's been power in the communities that I've entered and created.